Script analysis. Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. And yes, I did get a spray tan. Now on to our topic, script analysis. Okay, let me just say right off the bat that you really should have taken some acting classes that delve into script analysis. It is a crucial part of the actor's tool belt. And this topic is very broad, so what I wanna do today is focus on some tips and tricks that will help build upon the script analysis you've already learned from your acting classes. And specifically, I wanna talk about some common script writing conventions that when you understand them, can actually be helpful in your prep work for your auditions. But if you don't know them, well, you'll be in the dark. Okay, so for the following examples, we're assuming that this is for audition purposes and that for the audition, you're only given the pages of your character's scenes. And heck, sometimes you're not even given all of those pages. And one way you can discern that is when you look at the first page of your sides, you look for your character name in the stage directions before they start talking and see whether or not their name, the character name, is in all caps or not. If it is in all caps, then this is the very first time your character is appearing on screen for this show. So, for instance, let's say that your character's name is John Cocktoastin, and the first time they appear in your sides, their intro looks like this. Exterior Country Club, Day. A perfectly manicured lawn surrounds a beautiful clubhouse. Various club members come and go, and eventually we land on John Cocktoastin, confident and charming as he exits the clubhouse. So not only is your character John being introduced for the first time, but also the club members. Now, sometimes screenwriters won't capitalize extras that are gonna be in the background, but sometimes they do. Sometimes they'll even put in all caps a big prop or set piece that is going to be used. But for actors, it's very helpful to know if this is your character's first appearance. Because if it isn't, then it implies that your character was in a previous scene or scenes. And this could subtly affect the way you approach your character. Now, sticking with entrances, let's talk about a tidbit that trips up so many actors and betrays a lack of understanding when it comes to simple script writing conventions. For our example, let's look at an alternate opening for John Cocktoastin. Exterior Country Club, Day. Various club members come and go, carrying golf clubs, tennis rackets, etc. We land on a waiter who is bussing an empty table. Voice, off screen. That's what OS means. Beautiful day. John Cocktoastin walks up to the waiter. I'll have a martini, dry, and put it on the Underhills tab. The waiter says, very good, sir. The mistake that many actors make is that the character of voice, off screen, is John. That's your line. I've had actors argue this point with me where they have a scene similar to this and their character is off screen or they're on screen for that first line, but because they have not been introduced yet in the stage directions, maybe for a little bit of anticipation or maybe it's just a weird script writing choice by the writer. And so maybe their character's name just says man instead of voice. Either way, they argue that that's not them and that me, as the reader, should be the one reading the line, and it's awkward. This is where it's so helpful to read lots and lots of TV film scripts. Heck, if you want to do the work, read an entire book on script writing. It will help tons in understanding how to navigate your script while prepping for an audition. Now, one more note if your opening line of dialogue says OS off screen. Side note, I did another video on this, so check that out in the show notes below. If your character does start off screen for the audition, do not feel obligated to start off screen. This is more of an editing note than it is an acting note. So you have the choice in the audition whether you do or do not start off screen. Just don't feel boxed in by that choice. This is your audition. You get to choose. And speaking of previous videos, if you want to know the difference between a dot 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 and a dash, in a line of dialogue, check out that video in the show notes below. If you're lucky enough to have sides that were lifted directly from the latest script revision, there can be some helpful information in the margins of your sides. First and foremost, does it say what draft it is up on the top margin? It might say blue version or goldenrod or double goldenrod or network draft. I'm not gonna get lost in the weeds in describing the different colors that are used, the order that you're used, etc. But just know that if there is some sort of demarcation of the script revision number, then if you have interesting or really awkward dialogue, you should consider it intentional and not some sort of mistake in spelling or grammar. 
because this script has been poured over many times by many different sets of eyeballs. And to get to this point, you should assume everything is as it should be. Now, yes, you will occasionally come across a script that apparently the writer doesn't understand basic spelling or grammar, but when it comes to full budget productions, that shouldn't happen, though I have seen it all. Sometimes there are mistakes in screenwriting, but you should always err on the side of assuming that whatever is on that script is intentional and meant to be as written. Especially if, like I said, at the top of the script, you actually see what revision this is of the script. So if the dialogue is a little wacky or just seems to be written in a manner that doesn't seem conversational, it just means you have to do the extra work as the actor to put yourself in that character's shoes. Now, speaking of margins, if there are scene numbers or page numbers, that can be helpful information. If you have what appears to be an emotional scene, but it's the opening of the show, that may play differently than if it's on page 90 of a screenplay or page 60 of a network studio drama. Think about it. If it's the opening scene, the audience doesn't have any context yet. You haven't earned their attention. So oftentimes those opening scenes will play faster and maybe even with less emotional depth, since you know the audience won't be invested yet. Conversely, when we are really far into the story, the audience will be hooked, presumably, and therefore the scene might have more emotional depth and you've earned the right to take it at a slightly slower pace. Side note, for audition purposes, be careful about slowing down any scene for any reason. Casting directors can have that as a pet peeve that scenes in auditions are just too long. In short, you need to understand screenplay or teleplay structure to be able to discern whether or not these scene numbers and page numbers are useful. Okay, now when you're auditioning with a script that has dual dialogue, that's when two characters have side-by-side -side dialogue, what do you do? First, it should be common knowledge that this script writing convention is implying that the two characters are either talking simultaneously or they are overlapping considerably in those two chunks of dialogue. But for audition purposes, you can make the choice to not have those two paragraphs overlap so much if you're hoping for some extra clarity in your dialogue. Now, if both of those two characters are for the reader, just make sure you let them know if you want them to read one character or both characters. Okay, what about text messages and scripts? Whether your character is sending or receiving one, sometimes a writer will actually put the contents of that text message into the stage directions like this. Erwin gets a text message from Sally. When can I see you? He thinks a moment before texting back. And sometimes it appears as dialogue like this. Erwin gets a text message. Sally, when can I see you? Now, for the audition, you get to choose how to handle this. If you're playing the character Erwin and you want to mumble Sally's text message out loud to yourself, do it. If you want to skip over it altogether and just silently read the text message, do it. There is no agreed upon standard for this, so just do what will make you the most confident in your audition. But just don't make the mistake of thinking it's normal dialogue. And speaking of stage directions, sometimes a writer will put something into stage directions that actually looks like dialogue. Check this out. Erwin, I need more time. Boss, sorry Fletch, I can't. You're fired. What? Just like that? That looks like a reasonable response that Erwin might say out loud to his boss, but the text is left justified and Erwin's name is not on top of it in all caps. So do not read that out loud in your audition. It's meant as inner monologue, subtext, etc. You have to understand that scripts get read many, many times before any money gets attached and before they get produced. So when those decision makers are making the decisions on whether or not to put millions of dollars into this project, the story in written form needs to be a full experience. So sometimes writers will put in inner monologues like that. Sometimes they even put in lots of camera movement, which some people do consider poor form, but I digress. For the purposes of this video, just don't fall into the trap of reading that type of stage direction out loud or any stage direction. You should never read stage directions out loud in your audition. That's just weird. And finally, let me just say that if you see any other interesting formatting in your script, do your research. 20 plus years ago, I was auditioning for a film where the lead character was mute. And in the script, they indicated that by putting his dialogue in brackets. They still kept the dialogue in there so that the reader would understand what the character was thinking. But when I went in for the audition, I was not spooled up on that convention. 
So when the casting director had their first line as that lead character and she didn't say anything, I had this awkward moment where it finally clicked. Oh, right. He's mute. That's why there's brackets. So I learned the hard way that when you see something weird in a script, do your research. In summation, none of these little nuggets are life-changing, but all of them are considered the bare minimum for professional actors to know. In other words, you won't get brownie points for knowing them, but not knowing them could, at the least, get an eye roll from casting, and at the most, could take you out of the mix altogether. They might be thinking that if you're lacking in simple script writing convention knowledge, then can they trust you on set? Might sound harsh, but think of it this way. Learning about script writing is within your control. You can do the research, so do it. Okay, so what other conventions did I forget to cover that have tripped you up in the past or you still have questions about? Drop a comment below and I'll be happy to respond. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on set.